hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 39 of what if aizuna uchiha was naruto ancestor remember to comment and like guys and also go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if orochimaru was naruto's father that i posted on this channel i also post a new episode of what if naruto was a god amongst man so go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys and over on Anime King, I post a new episode of What If Naruto was sent to the Marvel world, so go ahead and check out that and enjoy. And remember, if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice and you enjoy the videos on both Anime King and Anime King 2, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying and talking back to all of you. So without further ado, let's begin this new episode. Start the intro So, the last part we left off, we were introduced to little Obito, Kakashi's son that he had. As his son was quite vibrant and moving around, he was a copy image of Kakashi. And we also heard Naruto thoughts about the Akaski, as the masked man Obito has been using the Akaski, and Sasuke wanted to take them out of commission. Suddenly, Gurin burst into the room and told Naruto about Onki and his squad, as Sasuke went to deal with it. Onki was going as he was floating in the air with hundreds of his soldiers below. Suddenly he saw one person as Sasuke was on his hawk. As Sasuke moved in a black flash as Onki was beyond shock when all of his soldiers were dead. As Onki went to face Sasuke as he tried to disintegrate Sasuke with his particle style. But Sasuke evaded the attack as he delivered a bone crushing kick to Onki that sent the man slamming into the ground. As Everything was being broadcasted all over the world so they could see. As Sasuke show Onki is might, they want to take down Naruto. And Sasuke told everyone that Naruto is a lot stronger than him. And look how he was dealing with Onki as Sasuke separated the man's head. Naruto was shocked as he got a news from the rebellion. Well, mostly from Kurenai as they wanted a truce. They wanted to surrender and become a part of the right nation. Both Kurenai and the others were planning something very dangerous as they were going to end, try and end Naruto's reign. Sasuke and Naruto cursed about it as Sasuke wanted to kill all of them. If they continue down this path, soon enough they will kill and eliminate all of the resistance. But Naruto wanted to go down the soft path as Haku interrupted as she told them that they, if they go, Sasuke must bring the army behind them. And if anything happens, they must release the army to slaughter every one of them. As Sasuke like that, as he wanted to get rid of all of them once and for all. As Naruto accepted that well. As Haku had a look on her face that made Naruto worried. It seems like she wanted him to come back. She needed him to come back. Like something was something was wrong, but he didn't know what. So the next morning the group set out. As Lee was there as well, as Lee had joined Naruto's side. After, Naruto phoned him at the hospital. As Lee has been teaching martial arts at the right forces to the younger ones as Naruto and his group arrived to see Kurenai and Sakura there as Naruto told the rest of them to go inside while him and Sasuke walk over to Kurenai and Sakura so yeah guys that was basically the last part we left off you guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself so let's start this new episode Naruto and Sasuke were standing face to face with Kurenai and Sakura Fifo Kage of Konoha Kurenai I presume it's a pleasure to meet you Naruto said not showing any sign that he once loved this woman more than anything. And seeing him not even recognize her, hurt deep in her heart, but she managed to shake his hand. Likewise, Emperor Naruto, she said. As she lingered a bit on the handshake, trying to memorize everything about the man that she loved deeply. Sakura and Sasuke seemed to be trapped in their own little world, and they didn't say a word to each other. Would it be possible if we can take a little detour, you see? I'm a little nervous, Naruto said. As... 
Kurenai and Sakura looked at each other as Sakura shrugged. That would be acceptable. I would like to bring her with me, said Kurenai. As Naruto nodded, that's fine. I'm perfectly fine with Haruna-san accompanying us. But I wouldn't mind having my friend here tag along as well, said Naruto cryptically. Very well, said Kurenai. Some moments later, Kurenai glanced at Naruto as he was walking aside her. As his hands were in his pockets, as he has changed over the years, he now looked like a ruler. As the fact that he agreed to this choose, it showed that old Naruto, the man that she had fallen in love with, was still there. As she saw the smile on his face, what's so funny, Emperor, she asked. I have observed from time to time that rebellion is in mankind nature. It's a part of who we are, Naruto said. Is that why you rebel against your own family and your own home? Asked Kurnai. As his smile wavered for a bit but it was still on his face. You're angry, he said. I am. I have been angry for the past three years. Not a day passed. That didn't make me forget what you did. Naruto looked behind and saw Sakura and Sasuke engaged in a similar, heated argument. As they separate from each other, trying to solve their arguments. I see you're wearing lenses. A counter against my Mangeta Sharingan Genjutsu. Smart move, Naruto said that smile. How could he? Of course he would notice. Those deep eyes could see through everything, almost even see into a person's soul. As she turned her face and started to walk off, as she didn't want him to look at her completely, seeing through her and knowing that they were planning something. Naruto, I'm grateful to you. Once you lift me up from despair, when I had lost everything, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been a part of Team 7, and I wouldn't have been the Hokage. I love you with everything in my heart, she said as she tried to control her tears. He didn't say anything as the both of them walked through the hall as Naruto saw stairs approaching them. And now you have rebel against the entire world. What is it that you seek? Is it power? Status? Or is this all just a game to you? Asked Kurenai. Again, no answer except for the faint footsteps she heard behind her. She spin around and she looked directly into his eyes. She wanted to stop. She didn't want to go through this plan. She didn't want to do it. She just hoped there was something. Couldn't there be something that made her stop? Naruto, what am I to you? Why did you spare my life, allowing me to live? Knowing that I would fight against you. Perhaps even kill you, she asked. As she moved forward and removed his face mask. As she kissed him, she poured out everything she had in her heart into that kiss. He didn't push her off, but he did not even move. Even a muscle. As she stopped. Farewell Naruto she said as she started to walk off. Are you going to assassinate me now? Kurenai stopped in her tracks as she was shocked. As she looked at him. As he had that same gentle smile on his face even though. He knew that they were going to try and kill him. He still seemed very calm. Only one word came to her lips. Why? Meanwhile Sasuke. It has been three years and he has not said anything to her. Not even a letter or explain why he betrayed the village. And this has been weighing on him. He has not been with any woman. Not anything solid. He has been with one night stands. But not anything for a long while. Why? Sakura said. Naruto told me one of the perks of being a commander is that you don't have to explain yourself to anyone. Sasuke said. Trying to be an asshole hoping that she would bite and go away. But Sakura slapped him across the face. As he just held his cheek. Be a man for once and give me the reason why you did all of this. I loved you, Sasuke, she said, tears in her eyes. As Sasuke walked away, as she followed him, Sasuke was trying to clear his mind. No person in the right has the balls to slap him like this. And this woman, when she tried to grab his arms, he snapped and pushed her away. But there wasn't any force in his push, just he was trying to maintain some distance. I did what I did because I felt it was right. Just like what you're doing right now, Sasuke said. By bending people wills? I see what Naruto did to all those nations he went over. I saw the slaughter of the Earth Country Daimyo's family, Sakura said. And what Konoha did to Naruto, my clan, my brother, my parents. Was that right, Sakura? Sasuke yelled. As he was letting out all of his anger for the past years. Sakura was shocked when she saw tears coming from his eyes. As he never really cried. She stepped forward as she grabbed him, as she hugged him, and to her surprise he hugged her back. People can try to change the system from inside as well, she said. 
pleading with him, hoping that he would change. Neither I or Naruto wish for this to happen. It was a ninja world that pushed us into this corner. There are countless others like us that the ninja world discriminated, and right now it's just paying for its crimes, Sasuke said flatly. We're going to war, aren't we, Sakura said. We were already at war, only this time, it will be a fight to the end. They remained silent, holding each other for the last time. As Sasuke knew the outcome of these negotiations, as he knew what he was supposed to do. I love you, Sakura. Always have and always will. She froze upon hearing his confession. As all these years she thought her feelings were one-sided. That the little moments they share meant nothing to him. He then broke the hug as he looked her in her eyes. When the time comes, you will have to kill me, Sasuke said. Don't, she said. Don't say that. You know that's the only way, Sasuke said. No, Sakura said as she grabbed him. As she pulled him into a kiss. As he kissed her back. As the both of them forgot about sides. They just stood there holding on to each other. Meanwhile, instead of answering Kurnai's question, Nurka simply walked into one of the rooms. As Kurnai followed behind him, what does this mean for the plan if he knew? Going up against an unaware Naruto was risky enough, but fighting against a Naruto who knew everything was pure suicide. You really think that you know all the dirty tricks in Ninja Book? I was an Anvu, a root, Naruto said. Dirty tricks were my daily meal, and all these pathetic tricks of bringing me here was not needed. I already know what you have in store for me. Why then? Why the hell did you come, she yelled. Walking into a surprise ambush was one thing. But going into one knowing what you're going into was suicide. You really hate me, don't you? Enough to kill me, he said, sadness in his voice. I never wanted any of this to happen. But you didn't give me a choice. We were on the bridge of total defeat. I didn't have a choice. Everyone always have a choice, Kurnai. I had, and so did you. And you still have one. It's not too late, Nurka said. What are you saying, asked Kurnai in a trembling tone. Come with me, you and Sakura, and all the others who want to come. I will accept them all. As she looked at him, the smile on his face and the look in his eyes showed her that he truly meant it. What was this man? How could you do this after everything that has happened to us? She asked, as he walked up and stroked her hair. Love is an unconditional feeling, Kurnai. Even in conflict, I have honored your wishes, and of those who followed you. You have become a great leader but I'm telling you all of us can coexist together. Our children should not grow up just to kill each other. You always think about the future, she said. Past is full of regret, present have too many problems. It is a future that we all look towards with hope in our heart. And you truly believe that the Reich is a future? That you have the intent to rule over everyone, asked Kurnai, making him laugh. You ninjas truly discard the information you deem relevant, right? What do you mean? asked Kurnai. The Reich is not what you think it is, Nurta said. We have a government. Each nation has a government that gathered over the affairs. That governor have an entire local government that help him maintain the place. Above the governor lie the quorum, which are the supreme representatives of the people of Reich. The prime minister or the empress lead this quorum. Whatever laws or regulation the emperor want to pass has to go through the quorum first, Nurta said. So you're saying that the emperor has no power, asked Kurnai. I never said that in matters of natural security or event of war the emperor has full authorization. But before starting any war he needs to have at least one third of the majority votes of the quorum. You can't just go to war just because you want to. Your people need to be agreeing with you or the war is for nothing. As Kurnai was shocked to hear that, as they never really got any information on the Reich, we have a flourishing business and an economy that has a growing success rate than all of the ninja villages combined and we don't need support from daimyos, he said. We do have conflict, but we have a department to take care of that and every report goes to the emperor as well, who usually look after law and order and is responsible for the nation's security. That doesn't mean he doesn't look into other affairs of the empire. I know I look into everything from time to time, said Naruto. This is a lot to take in, I never imagined, said Kurnai. I understand, and this isn't even counting the benefit programs, the retirement customs, and the schools, along with the other aids that the right provides. We look after our own, no matter what. 
class or status you are. This was not possible in the ninja villages due to lack of resources. Hmm, seems like you've been busy, Kurnai said, as she was honestly impressed with what he had done. She had heard rumors about how happy the citizens were in the empire, and now she understands the reason of it. Oh no, I just gave an idea here and there. It was mostly Haku and Snaddy. They planned all this stuff, I just pasted the stamp and made the people accept the new system with my speeches. Naruto joke, making her chuckle as well. You sound happy, she said. I am, he said. And I want the same thing for you as well. I told you my plan, now tell me you're for the human race. If it's better, I will die for it, Naruto said. Look me in the eye and tell me your system will maintain peace and keep the people happy. That your resistance will stay together and form a bond after killing the common enemy. If yes, he said, as he pulled a kunai, you can kill me right here. As she was left speechless with his offer, looking in his gaze tell that he was determined. But a part of her knew he was right. She had seen how Mei and Tamari were irritated for joining a rival village. Did she truly want it to go through the violent world again? This violent shinobi world. In the right only, people above the age of 17 can join the army. Instead, they go to school and live out normal life and see what the world has to offer. It's a better world, Kurnai, Nerta said. And Valkyrie, what about that? When you revive that monster, everything will crumble along with the entire human race, said Kurnai. I will achieve success because I'm not alone and neither are you. There are comrades supporting me and I will control that monster until the job is done. Then I'll seal it away its power to be never used by anyone for the fear of repeating history Narta said. You mean you don't want to control the Jubi and use it for world domination she asked. As she was shocked this wasn't what Jerry had told her. Valkyrie was just a means to an end and not the destructive plan that Jerry and the other Kages were suggesting. No, not a single human has a right to wield that power, not even me. Because we don't deserve it and not even the noblest person can not get corrupted with that kind of power Nerta said. Can you really do it said Kurnai. As Nerta was shocked she was actually considering this as she didn't say it was impossible or crazy as his heart jumped at that opportunity. He held onto her hands as he looked her straight in the eye as he gave her a nod. I can. But I need your help as well, Kurnai. I have this dream that one day the barrier between ninjas and civilians can be broken and we can live together as humanity. It's true that all of us has never gotten together and there has been conflicts. But I have this dream. Her eyes widened in shock when he kneeled before her as she saw the tears in his eyes. He wanted this dream to come true, really badly. I know there will be problems in Reich as well. But I believe it's a destiny we all have yearned for. And that is my dream of the future, Naruto said. That is why I asked you to take the first step today. Believe in me just this once. Please, 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 he begged. She was moved by determination and compassion in him. This was a Naruto that she had loved. The one who always cared about others. He was the most powerful man in the world, kneeling in front of her. As Naruto just kneeled there. As he felt. Her kneel down as she wrapped her arms around him as she was crying. This was not the destroyer that Jerry told her about. He was a savior of the shinobi world. He really was a savior. He was the one who will save their dying world. As she knew that he could simply kill all of them and be done with it. But no, he poured out everything that was in his heart. He was trying to take the hard path and bring everyone close and bring peace. As she could see the will of fire burning in him. As she could see now why the others have joined him so willingly. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, said Kurnai. Nurta smiled as he wiped her tears away. You fought for what you believed in. Don't blame yourself, said Naruto. You need to go now, take the western exit. You will encounter the less resistant there, said Kurnai as she was determined to get him out of here. When the others found out what she did, there was only one way this can end. But now she knew he was the one that was going to lead them to peace. She would put everything. All her hope and dream in him. I don't leave people behind, Nerta said. I will take everyone who will join you with me. Kurna, you cannot save everyone. It is up to a person to decide whether you want to be saved or not. But I am taking you back with me. No arguments, he said. 
Why do you care about me so much? She asked in a trembling voice as she looked at him. Because... But Naruto was caught off as there was a sudden explosion. As both of them ran out of the room, as they met Sasuke and Sakura on the way, as the both of them gave each other a glance, the two groups, as all of them understood the situation. So, does this mean Team 7 is back? Sakura asked, tears falling from her eyes. Yes, we are, but not until we get our last team member. We will just have to drag her with us, Kurnai said. The group ran outside. As the battle had started, the resistance faced off against Naruto's army. But Naruto wasn't looking at that. As Sasuke saw what Naruto was looking at, the pressure started to release from Naruto as the wall started to crack. As Sasuke quickly tackled Sakura and Kurnai back. As right in front of Naruto exploded. A few seconds later, Kurnai wiped the dust off her face as she looked up. As Naruto was standing there, in front of him was Jiraiya, Anko, Temari, Mei, Eo, Kojo, Baki, and Kankuro. And over to the distance was the Raikage with 7,000 Kumo Shinobis ready. That was just 40% of the entire Kumo army. And what stood next to him was the two Jinjulkis. Fighting against the Nibi was one thing. But against the Haksabi, who was said to be the perfect host. As Naruto group arrives, Navi get the civilians to safety. Kakashi get the reporters and the passbys to safety, despite which group they belong to. Lee, you coordinate with your incoming battalions, Naruto said. Now, as Kakashi sent a pleading look towards Uncle to leave because Naruto was pissed, Kurunai, Sakura, get back here, Jiraiya hiss, as he saw both Kunoichis lowering their heads. What the hell, Kurnai Sakura, come back now, uncle said. But she then stepped back as she saw Naruto gaze on her. I'm going to murder every last single one of you. Uncle, this is the last chance I'm going to give you. I was a brother to you, so I'm asking you to come with me. Kurnai and Sakura can explain. If you don't trust me, then have faith in them. Because otherwise, I'll rip you to shreds. I save you from Urchimar curse. Have you forgotten that, Naruto said. I, as she stuttered, now or never uncle, either stand alone as a ninja or die, or join team 7 and we can be a family again. The choice is yours, he said, as he looked her straight in the eye. As uncle, then sun shined right over to Kurnai's side, as she didn't look Jiraiya or the others in the eyes. The remaining members of Konoha 12 arrived beside Jiraiya, as all of them had mass murder in their eyes, looking at Naruto. Been a while, guys, Naruto said. Surrender now, A said. You are outnumbered. And check again, Naruto said, cutting him off. As Darui came running from the corner with a terrified look in his eyes. Raikage-sama, five enemy battalions are marching towards us. It's the SS battalions, said Darui, as he saw the Raikage looking rather nervous and everyone else flinching. The SS was Naruto's best and most powerful soldiers. As he turned towards the SS commander, as a mad grin came on Sasuke's lips. Go wild, commander, said Naruto seriously. No restraints, Sasuke asked. Was Naruto really allowing him to go mad shit crazy on the enemy? I want their screams, Naruto said. The sound for then arrived with Gurin as they kneeled beside their leader. Your Highness, orders, Gurin said respectfully. Don't interfere, your only job is to protect Kurnai, Sakura and Anko. It is not that I don't think they are strong, but they are very important and will play a great role in the future. Protect them to your last breath, Naruto said. Yes, sir, they all said. Kurunai tried to move. Don't interfere, Hokage. He can handle it, said Teowaya. He's outnumbered. I have to help him. Seikon snorted upon hearing her. You are staring at the man who entirely defeated the entire Reich army. He's the strongest amongst all of us. This is his pride, because if he can't prove his strength, he has no honor to rule. Just don't end up in the way or you will die. When he's this pissed, he will go wild. The Raikage raised his hand as two battalions of Kinkaku squad step forward. So be it, Nurka said calmly. Charge, the commander of the squad army said. If that wasn't a threat, another 100 Kumo Shinobis dashed forward as well. Fine then, Nurka said. Wood release. Cutting technique. As Kurna watched as multiple wood spikes ripped from the ground and impaled the 100 ninjas 
in seconds, slaughtering all of them. Mokiton said Jiraiya in shock. He knew that Tsunade injected Naruto and Hoshirama cells to save his life from Danzo's virus. But that was it. Naruto never had the ability to use Mokiton three years ago. As Jiraiya realized their intel failure. As he looked towards their two Jinjulke, his mistake hit them hard. They had brought two Jinjulke so he could use a Mokiton to suppress rather easily. The Raikage could only watch as his best fighters were obliterated right in front of his eyes. The way his man were massacred made him think that it wasn't a good idea to brought Yujito and be with him. But there was no choice now if he made them flee, the SS battalions would slaughter his ninjas. There was no way he was going to lose here. You fool, you still think you can win, Nurta said, as he saw a determined look in the Raikage eyes. There are four Kage level shinobis against you along with two of the finest Jinjulkis in the elemental nations. We outnumber you 6 to 1 the Raikage said, but a smile came on Nurta's face. Is that right he said. Wood clone technique he said, as he created 48 clones from the wood vines that break from the ground, and each clone created 12 clones. Now it is 12 against 1, don't whine in front of me, you are the Kages. Now then, would you like these clones to use Mokiton? And Susano near the axe. Uncle sighed in relief, she thank whatever messed up part of her brain told her to switch this side. And now watching Jiraiya and the Kage surrounded, their plan to overpower him with brute force had completely backfired. Kurnai could hardly compare him to the pleading leader who had bowed in front of her moments ago. Was he this powerful the entire time? If he wanted to, he didn't have to even reason with her. As Sakura was shivering with the bloodlust that Naruto was raining down on them, as she saw her friends was not fearing either. This fight was way out of their lead. As Naruto marched towards the two, Jinjulkis with the Kage surrounded, but his former friends appeared as Shikamaru, Ino, Kiba, and Nechi and Shino and Tenten. This is as far as you go, Naruto said Kiba. Naruto looked at Kiba, he had given the boy a chance before, but not anymore. The others had the same look in their eyes, none of them were going to get out of his way. Before anyone could blink, Naruto was in front of Kiba. May Hashaiman have mercy on your soul, Naruto said. Ino screamed out in pain as the group saw Naruto touch Kiba on the forehead. He exploded in a mass of blood and flesh as several wind circles were around Naruto as not even a drop of blood touched him. Shikamaru and the others collapsed on their knees as Naruto released his key as Naruto grabbed Shikamaru by the ponytail. Damn you for forcing me into this position, Naruto said, as he was pissed off at Shikamaru. How could he lead his man into this position where they could not win? The will of Shikamaru could yet to finish that as Naruto reached and plucked out his left eye out of the socket. As Shikamaru screamed out in pain as Naruto tossed the half-blind boy aside, as he walked towards the two Jinjulikis. As Tenten grabbed Nurta's leg stopping him. Tenten no, said Neji. At last he was too late as Nurta raised his other foot. As he crushed Tenten's skull. After witnessing that. It was too much and the bloodlust. It was too much for them. The aura that was leaking from Naruto. Knocked them all out as they collapsed. With the small fries out of the way. Nurta gaze landed on Yujito as she took a small step back. She was surprised when Killer B stepped forward as the both of them looked at each other, sizing each other up. As B covered his body in Tail B's cloak, as Naruto covered his body in an orange chakra from the Kayube, as Yujito did the same as she and B stepped forward. Their intentions were clear, it was a fight to the death. All hell break loose as B appeared in front of Naruto. Lariat, he said. Yujito was shocked when she saw Naruto holding on to B's hand. B pushed harder, but Naruto slid back a bit, but he stopped. As a growl came from Naruto, as he grabbed B and lifted him in the air and threw him away a great distance. Naruto behind you, yelled Kurnai. As A was behind Naruto, his lightning cackling off of him, his hand driving towards Naruto's chest. But Naruto activated the skeleton around him of Susanoo. As A slammed right into it, pushing Naruto away as Yujito appeared in front of him. Kiso, flying claw, she said. Rasengan, Naruto said, as he slammed it right into Yujito's claw. 
that broke apart all of that as he thrust it right into her chest. As she coughed up blood, she was sent flying away. Naruto then turned to see Jiraiya had chopped half of his wood clones into a mud trap while the rest of them were chopping barriers. The son was certainly living up to his name by saving the others. And right now he was glaring at Kurnai. You're defending this demon? asked Jiraiya. By siding with this monster you're approving of everything he did to us. I don't approve of his methods, she said. But, Naruto, I have nothing but love and respect for him. He's an honorable man who worked day and night for everyone. Maybe he has made some mistake, maybe not all of his actions were just, but he understands the pain that everyone is feeling. He's not a demon. He's Uchiha Naruto, the savior of this world and the man I love, she said. She didn't care what the others think anymore. It didn't matter, none of it did. It didn't even matter if Naruto wanted to be with Haku. She was determined to make her feelings known. One way or another, she will give him her full support. As Kurnai walked up to him, What shall it be, Emperor? she asked. Stand and fight or make a tactical retreat? As Naruto held her hand, We fight! I believe in you, she said. As she went through hand sign, Summoning Jutsu! As there's a huge poof. As Naruto and the others found themselves on top of a giant wolf. As Jiraiya looked up as he clenched his fist. I will handle Jiraiya, me and Tamari said Kurnai. You can't be serious, Naruto said they are. I am the fifth Hokage, Kurnai said. Her stern, passionate answer made him look at her in a different light. She has changed. She was fighting for what she believed in. Uncle, take care of Baki and Ao. Sakura, you engage. Kojuro and Konkuro. This is a command of your Hokage, she said sternly. As Naruto saw the both of them bow, as they dashed over to their targets, as Naruto commanded the Sound 4 to assist them, Naruto, you must win against your past and against the result of your actions, Kurnai said. Kurnai, don't die, Naruto said. Who do you think I am, she said a smirk. Point taken, he said, as he jumped off the wolf and headed towards the Raikage. As the both of them were over where the last two Jinjunki was, the three of them surrounded Naruto, a, Yujito and B, as Naruto had a smirk on his face even though it was the three of them. Yujito had her sharp metal claws, while A had his entire body crackling with lightning, and B had armed himself with all of his swords. As they saw nine tails emerging from his back, they looked like wooden structures, but they were covered in reddish orange energy and they were flexible. As Naruto's eyes were completely red, even redder than his Sharingan. Ready to die, Naruto? asked A flatly. As Naruto shrugged, Naruto then closed his eyes. It was time. A and B dashed forward as the tails moved forward and fired off hundreds of poison, chakra led bullets. As B had to shield himself along with Raikage with his octopus tails, as he hissed in pain as a dark projectiles that Naruto was firing burned his octopus tails. Yujito jumped in the free, her two chakra tails were already armed. Her claws extended outwards to attack her target. As they fought each other as Naruto Nine Tails clashed with her too. B appeared behind Naruto and tried to stab the man in his back, but he was swatted away by Naruto's tails. But the Raikage appeared in a flash as he drove his fist forward, knocking Naruto back. Hoping to have caused damage, they saw Naruto get out of the rubble with the Susano with a little crack on it, as it didn't even touch him. He hit his Susano. Amaterasu Barrage, Naruto said, as he fired off black bullets. As one of them hit the right eye on his shoulder, as he started to burn, the black fire started to spread. As Yujito quickly moved and sliced off his arm with her claws, as the right guy is in pain. Seeing his brother in pain made B furious as the entire ground started to shake as B started to release the octopus. Seeing this, Naruto ran through hand sign as he slammed his hand on the ground. Wood release of creation as wood vines came from the ground and wrapped around the eight tails. As Naruto launched forward, the eight tails seen what he was doing. As the both of them did the same attack, continuous tail beast balls as they released their attacks. As the others stopped fighting for a second as they saw, the attacks went off as Kurnai looked over. Naruto, please don't die, she said. As Nadi was tended to several Reich soldiers, 
as she saw the explosions went off. Her own Sasuke was the bodies of hundreds of Wright and Kumo ninjas. The battle was tough and gruesome and despite everything, the Kumo's ninjas outnumbered the Wright by at least 1000 shinobis. But Sasuke was making up for it. For every Wright soldier that was killed, Sasuke killed 5 Kumo ninjas. Lee was already engaged with Mike Guy, holding the Taijutsu warrior off. Meanwhile, Naruto was on the ground as his skeleton Susanoo form vanished. As his body was being healed, forming a bitchu bomb was one thing, making several of them and firing them off like that was another. Across the field, the octopus lay there as it was bloody, but given the fact that it was still there, show quite an achievement. Guillotine drop! The right eye came crashing down from the sky, his body still encased in lightning. As Naruto pointed all of his tail upwards, as the tails grabbed the right eye and swung him around and smashed him into the ground. Mouse hairball, spitfire said a voice, as Naruto quickly brought his tails in front of him as a barrage of blue flames smashed into them from Yujito. As she attacked him with unlentless barrage, trying to slice him apart with her claws, but he was evading and dodging every single one of her attacks. As these tails were not just because of the biju, but because of his monkey ton and the biju chakra and his own. As Nurka stopped as he looked at her, as she looked to be thinking hard, something on her mind he said a smile. As she looked at him surprised, even in the midst of battle he was still smiling. There was no hatred in his eyes for her, it looked like he understood her. You got good moves said Yujito. You're not bad either Nurka said. I don't really wish to fight you Yujito. I'm afraid that's impossible, Uchiha and Naruto, she said. As Naruto nodded, if only we had met some other way, I would have liked to get to know you, she thought. As Naruto saw the giant octopus start to get back to his feet, as Yujito started to transform into the two-tailed cat, the Raikage also appeared beside his two Jinjulke. Krama, are you ready, Naruto asked. I was wondering when you would ask. I'm itching for some action. Well then, let's show them, Naruto said. But guys, be in this episode right here. If you want to see the next part, if you already know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, cheers to all of your friends, your social media platform. But for now, guys, I'm out of here. Peace.